the Joe Rogan experience. I got to ask a question on behalf of somebody else. Hold on. <laughs> you, got, you got a question stored? Yeah, yeah, because I, I was talking to, you know, not a hundred Okay. Your grandmother? Yes. Named Josie? Yes. Gerard Way? Yes. Lead singer of My yes. Chemical Romance? Yes. Yeah, he, we're related. That's what he said. I was yeah. like, I'm going to do Joe Rogan. He goes, I don't have 100% confirmation on this, but I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan is my cousin. Yeah, I we're think cousins. my Aunt Josie was his grandmother. Yeah, I don't know him, but we're cousins. How yeah. crazy that two people in the same family became super fucking famous and don't even... Yeah, we don't know each other. <laughs> That's not, you got to have money. He's fascinating. He's good. He'd yeah, be a be good, cool. great guest. Yeah. Um, that, and plus, like, yeah. you're related. Huh? Yeah, we're All right, related. So anyway, back to the story. Um, so, you know, I just, I didn't know what I was going to do for a living. Mm. And then um, there's a, a, a few things happened. You know, a few, uh, watching a friend of mine get knocked out really bad. There was a guy named Jersey Long, who was this badass Canadian guy who knocked my friend Larry out. He hit him in the head with an ax kick and just changed. Larry was never the same again. He was always like real tentative and nervous. It destroyed his confidence. And, you know, we also, we weren't making any money. So, these, you know, was, these are all amateur fights. Right. So there was this thing like, what am I doing? Like, why am I, why is this my whole life? Why were you doing it? Well, it, it changed who I was, you know, from the time I was 15 to the time I was 21, almost 22. When I started fighting, when I started doing competitions, it gave me a focus and it gave me something where I didn't feel like I was a loser. Right. Like for the first time in my life, it was something that I didn't. I, I realized that if I focused on this thing and I dedicated to my, myself to this thing, I could be successful. And that changed and, and how I view- be the opposite of a loser, be yes, a winner in most cases. Where I wasn't before that, I was, I was a loser. I just didn't, it didn't have anything going. So it was, was I wasn't like, good at school. It was your football. Like for some people in high right. school, it's like, I found football. I found something. Or it was your Jesus. Some people like, I yes, found Jesus. Yes, and put me yes. I think that's what people need, man. They need a something, whether it's chess or Jesus or filmmaking, whatever the fuck it is. Right. You find a thing and you focus it and you see some success and you're like, oh my God, I can, I, keep I can do something. I can do something. I can be somebody. I can, I can, I can do something that's fulfilling and rewarding and I know that I'm not a loser because a lot of it is like confidence, right? A lot of it is if you look at your life and you look at things that other people are doing, you go, God, I can't do that. He's doing that. They, these people can do that. They're different than me. I don't have confidence. It takes doing something and having some success at it that gives you confidence to do other things. And martial arts something. were so terrifying to me. I was so scared of it that it became by overcoming that and becoming successful at it it gave me this understanding that you can do you can basically do you know within reason whatever you want if you just focus on it and you, you're not going to do it it's not going to be immediate you're not going to be successful immediately and you're going to fail but through those failures you learn and you go back and you get some experience and you do it better next time and that is everything. failure is just yeah. success training yeah and it's like this fucking tattoo, this is Miyamoto Musashi mm. from the Book of Five Rings. And in that book, he said something, and I read it when I was like 17 years old. Once you understand the way broadly, you will see it in everything. And that, that, is, uh, that is, if anything, that is one of the main focuses of my life that I think that- One more time, say it. Once you understand the way broadly, you can see it in everything. That describes you. You're a seeker. My favorite- uh proverb is uh may you realize your own divinity in this lifetime mm. i saw it on a yoga wall hanging that my wife put on the house once and it was mm. just it wasn't really the message she intended she just liked i think the image of buddha and uh one day i was letting the dogs out and i was waiting by the door so he had time to like really stare at it and i was probably just stoned enough and then completely understood it where i was like oh yeah it is a blessing may you like realize that. your divinity yeah. in this life to your own divinity meaning don't wait until you drop dead to find out you were god all along handing it off to somebody else and some higher power higher powers than you motherfucker became a fighter made him feel worth something motherfucker became a filmmaker made him feel worth something like manifested um he's absolutely right it's it you can kind of do anything. You can kind of do reason, anything. Not, like, you reason. can't fly without a jetpack. Right. Like, you can't beat LeBron things. James one on one. Yes. And you Mike know. Tyson back yeah. when he was. Yeah. There's things you can't do physically. Committed, as you say. But there's a lot of things you can do. 
a lot of things you can get better at and especially artistic pursuits because the thing about artistic pursuits is you kind of everybody finds their own way and so the shift to me from doing something that was competition especially con- competition with grave physical consequences yeah, really, where you're to like, go Ow, yeah every night. to go from that to doing stand up when i first started doing stand up i realized about like, okay this could be it like the the fucking fighting thing there's like it's a dead end there's no money in it. This is before the UFC. There was no money in kickboxing. I remember I'd gotten offered uh, a kickboxing fight, a professional fight, for 500 bucks, And I was like, what is that? $500? It means I have to train for six weeks. No alcohol, eat f- eat good, run, do all these different things, train, even spar. October. And then 500 bucks at the end of Not it. And then it. maybe brain damage. It's like when you see what porn stars get paid for anal and you're like, what? Like you would imagine, like don't they pay you a million dollars to do that? And they're like, oh no, you know, five hundred to one to fifteen hundred sounds about right. Yeah.